Okay, on your mark, get set, go. Here we go. Our last lesson is a two-day lesson on solving trigonometric equations. You will solve for theta between 0 and 360 degrees, which means your calculator will be in degrees. We start with 2 sine of theta minus 1 is equal to negative 2. How do you think you solve that? You add the 1. <laughs> 2 sine of theta is equal to negative 1. What do you think you do next? You divide by 2. So far, it's pretty easy, huh? <laughs> sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. Now you're just trying to answer that single question. Where is sine of theta equal to negative one half? Well, there's a way in which to answer those types of questions. And we start by answering this question. Where is sine negative? Three and four. Negative in the third and the fourth quadrants. A for the day, who remembers the angle at which sine is equal to one half? 30 degrees. That's all the answers. 30 degrees. Now, sine is not equal to negative one half at 30 degrees, is it? So what we do is we use this drawing to create two reference angles. And a reference angle is an acute angle. An acute angle formed between the terminal side of the angle and the x-axis. Always the x-axis. So then on our calculator, if you didn't know it was 30 degrees, just turn your calculator on, which it won't because it's out of batteries. And once you turn it on, you go down to degrees, and you press sine inverse 0.5. I don't include the negative. We've already done the work of the negative by identifying it's in the third and fourth quadrant. I just do sine inverse of 0.5. I get 30. So that means that my reference angle is 30 degrees. So I determine what value those angles are between 0 and 360. What is this first angle here if it's 30 degrees past 180? 210. If this one is 30 degrees behind 360, then it would be at 330 degrees. And so you can see if you press sine of 210 or sine of 330, that you... See that you get the negative 0.5. Does that make sense? Let's try another example. Problem number two. Negative 5 secant of theta minus 13 is equal to negative 2. What do I do? Add 13. Dupa dupa. Divide by negative 5. Secant of theta is equal to negative 11 fifths. Oh, no, I don't have a secant button on my calculator. Cosine. Tricky, tricky, tricky. That's what we do. I know how to solve that. I make my quadrants. In which quadrant is sine, uh, cosine negative? Two and three. I make two reference angles. I've already determined where it's negative, the second quadrant and the third quadrant. So I don't have to type the negative into the calculator. I simply do cosine inverse of 5 divided by 11. I get 62.96. So how do I calculate theta? Seventeen point oh four.
Negative six, tangent theta plus five is equal to negative three. Subtract five. Negative six, tangent theta is equal to negative eight. You take it away from there. Go ahead, solve the rest. Uh, nope, tangent is positive here. It's uh, positive four thirds. Yep. It's always from the x-axis. Never from the y-axis. Every time from the x-axis. So the question: How did we uh, choose the first and third quadrant? The tangent value is positive, so therefore we choose where tangent is positive, which is the first quadrant and the third quadrant. Second question, how do you draw the angles? Well, I draw one side of the angle along the x-axis. The other side goes into the quadrant that we are located in. Okay? I then inverse 4 over 3, I get 53.13. The theta is equal to 53.13 degrees and 233.13 degrees. Done. What do you think of that? The next one looks really bad, doesn't it? It's really no big deal. It's distribute negative six cotangent of theta plus three plus three equals six minus two cotangent of theta minus one. What do you think I do? Combine like terms. So I'm going to add the two cotangents over to the other side, and I'll get negative four cotangent of theta. And then 6 and 6, uh, looks like I get a negative 1. Divide by uh, negative 4, I get cotangent of theta is equal to a fourth. Oh, no, I don't have a tangent or cotangent button on my calculator. But I have a tangent button. So I have tangent of theta is equal to 4 over 1. So, which quadrant is tangent positive? Again, first and third. We draw along the x-axis into the first quadrant, along the x-axis into the third quadrant. I tangent inverse 4. 75.96. So, that means theta is equal to 75.96 degrees and 255.96. Ready to see something more challenging? Tower. All right, here we go. Three, secant squared. Plus 1 is equal to 12. What to do? Divide by 3. Square root. When I square root a variable, I have to list plus or minus. Oh no, I don't have a secant button on my calculator. How many answers are you going to have? Four. So, where is cosine positive? First and fourth. Negative. Second and third. So I get four different values. I cosine inverse. Fifty eight point five two.
careful with your parentheses. So I've got theta is equal to 58.5 degrees. 21.48 from sky to 180 and 301.48 nice distance yeah it was that's pretty sweet what? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, what's Super Bowl number six? Two tangents. Any idea? What if you had a clue? What would it involve? Take out a tangent. Factor. It's our good old friend. Factor. Tangent of theta times two tangent of theta. Plus one. Sweet. Remember that great thing called the zero product property? Love the zero product property. Because then we can factor it and set both pieces equal to zero. So tangent of theta is equal to zero. And then we'll have tangent of theta is equal to negative one half. Where is tangent equal to zero? <laughs> like, like bring my boss in here right now. They would just they just cut my pay in half. They're like, <laughs> they're like, did you ever test them on this? Yes, I tested them on this. Well, obviously, you didn't do your job. So they don't know what it is. All right, so we'll, let's figure it out, okay? Um, so good, zero is one. So you've got a zero, I'm sorry, one, zero. We've got zero, one. We've got negative one, zero. And we've got zero, negative one. So in terms of X and Y, what is tangent? In terms of X and Y, Y over X. So... Which spots would give you zero when you take y and divide it by x? Zero, 180, and 360, right? What would these spots give you? Undefined. So therefore, our result is zero degrees, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees. Now we have to solve where tangent of theta is equal to negative one half. Well, let's first decide where is tangent negative. Second and four. Take my calculator. Turn it on. Tangent inverse 0.5. 0.657. So subtract from 180. 153.43. 323.43. So how many solutions do we have for that one? Five. Got to have them all. 360, I take a half a point off. Sure. Oh, is it? Nice arithmetic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, zero divided by one is zero. One divided by zero is undefined. 
Zero divided by negative one. Zero. Negative one divided by zero. So we want to know where tangent is zero. Zero, 180, 360. Yep. Yep. Tricky, tricky. Okay, we'll go back and fix my arithmetic. Uh, it's not 323, it's 333. All right. Okay, flip it over. Let's do two more problems and call it a day, huh? What about number seven? Do we have a negative four product property? No, we have a zero product property. So leave the zero alone. What if it looked like that? Could you solve that? You would factor it, right? Could you? 5x plus 4 times x plus 1, right? So let's do the same thing. Except, except in 7x, we have cosine of theta. So we have 5 cosine of theta plus 4 times cosine of theta plus 1 equals 0. Love the 0 product property. So Emma, don't laugh. You only encourage her. <laughs> Emma Boyang is an unruly student. She should be removed from the school. <laughs> Boy, she's just losing it today. Logan, what do you think of that? Cosine theta is equal to negative four fifths. In what quadrants is cosine negative? What? Oh, you said the positive. Okay, all right. Good thought. You thought positive. Uh, we're gonna go two and three. So we'll inverse. We're gonna inverse the four fifths. Thirty-six point eighty-seven. Yeah, the, the three, four, five, I kind of memorized. Unbelievable. All right, so. I got 143.13, is that right? And then I'm going to add, uh, so we got uh, 216.87. Now, next one's a little bit different. Cosine of theta is equal to negative 1. So is cosine the x value or the y value? X value, where on, uh, where on the unit circle between 0 and 360 does, yeah, 180 is where you have an x value of negative 1. So here it's theta equals 180 degrees. So... This one happens to have three solutions. So you can see, you, you don't know if there's, that one's three, the previous one was five, the one before that was four, the one before that was two. You're not gonna know how many solutions you get. You, you have to uncover it through the problem. You gotta uncover it through the problem, okay? Um, and right now we're doing kind of the basic level problems. Tomorrow we'll get to the hard ones, okay? All right, last problem, 10. We're gonna skip eight, nine, we do eight, nine tomorrow. So we do 10. Uh, don't worry about this symbol right here. It's actually the same as theta. It just it came up in a different font. So I um, uh, just pressed the wrong key. So uh, what to do? Factor out a tangent. So we've got tangent of theta is equal to zero. We already solved that problem, right? And we got 0 degrees, 180 degrees, 360 degrees. 
And then we're going to solve this problem, which is sine of theta is equal to negative 2. Sorry about that. Just got to make sure they're right. So the question is, uh, being you figured that out once, you know, could you do it again? And I'll probably just, if I see that throughout your test, and let's say it was wrong, I'll probably just take off one point instead of just picking pick points off. All right, so sine of theta equals negative 2. Somebody tell me something interesting about that. Why? So the unit circle has a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of. And in fact, if you consider the unit circle put on a graph, the sine graph, you remember that it has a maximum value of 1, minimum value of negative 1. The sine graph is just a unit circle put on the xy coordinate plane. So you, you can see here that sign never achieves a value of negative 2. And so therefore, there is no solution for this part. Uh, these are solutions. And so, you know, just do a little bit of work here to indicate, okay, you don't have a solution results from that, but you do here. Okay. Is that fair enough? And that is that is very common to, to get that type of thing to show up in these, these problems. So with that said, I have a nice assignment for you. I know you love book assignments. Yes, I'll get to the ACC next.